Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. This is Hunter from Al Nash Photography and we have a brand new product, a product that has been heavily sought out for and requested for so long in the community and we finally have it today. So you wonder what is in this box here? Well, thank you to Agena Astro for actually getting this in the first batch to come out. If you don't have any hints of, as of yet, this is going to be the big one. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, we finally have the ZWO Camera Angle Adjuster. This has been a product that has been heavily suggested for what seems like one to two years now. And finally, we have it in our hands here, and I can't wait to try this out. As a disclaimer, ZWO or Agena did not send me this camera angle adjuster for me to try out. I bought this on my own accord, and I'm going to do a review anyway. So, all my comments and statements are going to be genuine, and it's not going to be swayed by, you know, someone has sending me this for free. But I do expect some good results out of this regardless. So, let's get into what we can find inside of the box. Alright, so let's go ahead and begin to open up the box to see what is included. So, first opening... We are met with the uh, quick guide here, which basically just kind of just goes over, you know, how to plug it in, uh, what kind of drivers you might need if you're not using an ASI Air, uh, some warnings for this, a um, little bit of some examples there inside the ASI Air. Uh, what is also very helpful too is a guide here to know what kind of back focus for your setup. Like if you're using a uh, filter wheel, you're using a filter drawer, or just straight, just using it from the camera itself. So that is also a very handy indeed. Opening up the box now, and there it is. In all its glory, the beautiful red and black finish. Now pulling it out, the one thing I didn't notice, they mentioned it said that this thing is pretty light, you know, and kind of holding it, is. It seems a little bit heavier than what it led on than what I would have thought. But on the side here, we have two plugs. We have the type C plug-in. This is where you connect this to your computer or the ASI Air. And we also have this, what looks like an audio jack. This is actually a plug. If you want to use a hand controller to be able to manually rotate this, it is the same hand controller that you like you would use for the EAF, so if you have one of those, you can use this manually as well. On the top here, you can see it has some very uh, easy identifications of which side to point this, whether it's towards the telescope or the side of the camera. You have, you know, the threads from this side here, and then from the camera side, it's already pre-installed with the 54 millimeter uh, threads. But also in the box as well, if you're looking for something smaller, you can change this out here. You just got to take out the screws that will hold this in place and be able to use the smaller uh, thread size for depending on your system, especially because a lot of th threads now these days usually use uh, 48 millimeter. And then down at the bottom underneath, you have another little box here. When you open that up. This should be where your USB is. Oh, you actually also get a uh, very, very small uh, Allen key. And then inside the box here, you got your Type-C USB cable to plug in to your system. Now quickly going through the guide here, um, the back focus seems pretty self-explanatory. It's all 55 uh, millimeter back focus depending on your system too. So being able to use this with my Explorer Scientific 102 triplet should be a piece of cake because I do use a filter wheel for that one shot color camera. But the one thing I am interested in is how this is going to potentially work or not work when I'm using my rocket on setup. Reason being because the threading at the end of here is what you would use for a camera lens since technically this is a Canon camera lens that is modified and I do have some adapters to change it to regular threads but the problem that I see is you need to have this here this is an adapter to change it from you know a camera lens to 54 millimeter threads 
Now, with the description of the guide, connecting this, then the filter uh, wheel and the rotator all together with the camera, I'm not exactly sure that's going to be, you know, the right back focus for a system like this. So something I'll have to do some trial and error down the line when I want to set this up again. Maybe I might have some insight with uh, ZWO. Maybe they have a adapter that's kind of specialized for something like this too. And I also worry about because of where my dovetail is, I might have to adjust this around that it doesn't clunk into the, the dovetail in itself. So... We're gonna go ahead and since I already have the Explorer Scientific already pretty much set up, we're gonna go install it on that telescope instead. So I went ahead and got my uh, camera and field flattener off of my refractor and we're gonna go ahead and put it together. So according to the instructions here, it's going to be, you know, the threads to your field flattener or telescope, the camera angle adjuster, the filter wheel, and then the camera. So usually when I am using the uh, the flattener, usually you get this uh, 16 and a half millimeter adapter. Well, thanks to this, this back focus is 16.5 as well, so you do not need this anymore. But what I did come to find out, since the threads are a little bit different, especially for this, the biggest it can go is 48. But luckily, with the uh, adapter that I do have for M54 to 48. I already have one of these, so this is going to work out perfectly. So that's the first thing I'm going to do is find the scope side, and I'm going to go ahead and twist this into place so it is locked right on in, just like that. Then I'm going to go ahead and screw on my field flattener reducer. There we go. Now this here should already be M54 threads, which is exactly what this is here. So now I should be able to just screw this right on. There we go. And just like that, we're already set up and ready to go. Now I just need some clear skies to be actually able to test this under the stars to see if it's going to make our lives much easier, especially when framing targets. So I will see you the next time it is clear. Now that we're outside here, I'm going to go ahead and start connecting to the camera rotator. I'm going to try and speed this up as quick as possible because it has just been extremely cold here over just not only here in Delmarva, but pretty much the entire lower 48 this past month. And it's uh, nice, crispy, about 5 degrees out here, so and it's only going to get colder. And then we do have snow on the ground as well. But I'm going to show you how to connect the camera rotator to your ASI Air. You'll see this uh, little tab up here that calls CAA. You could just go ahead and select this to CAA. Go ahead and connect that over and it's going to prompt up and it says enable rotator for guiding. Now for this, uh, the turn on here is basically for any of the cameras like the 2600 duos, the mono or the color or for the 2600 Air, which has the integrated guide chip in there. So because with this uh, camera rotating, it's going to mess up your guiding a little bit as well, your calibration. So it'll just kind of switch the steps around. So instead of, you know, go ahead and rotating to the position that you want and then start to do the calibration, it'll do it both well, it'll rotate it beforehand and then guide off of where your position is at that point. So that's just a little warning for that. And you can see we already have the uh, the data present of where it is. So right now it is basically at 270 degrees, which is basically vertical up. So you can either kind of select it to, you know, say you want to rotate it to, I don't know, 217 you can go ahead and just hit that rotate button and you'll start to see it rotate into that position of where you're setting up. So something to keep in mind as well, what I found in the previous testing that I have for this, make sure that your cables are not gonna hang up because what I found out, I was given some pretty frustrating times at first figuring out what the heck is going on? Why is this thing failing when I'm telling it to go to specific areas? 
Well, come to find out, I was having some cable snag, and actually inside of the app, it was detecting that there was a cable snag somewhere, and it caused it to not actually rotate to the position, which I thought was very interesting. I'm not sure if there's like a sensor on the inside of here that the uh, the text that there is a cable snag, but it will prevent it from not doing so, which was really cool. And I was like, hey, that's actually a really good idea because what happens if you know the camera is rotating to a certain position and it's just gonna keep on going and there's a cable snag somewhere, you're gonna end up damaging your device all in general. So I thought that was a really cool feature. I'm not sure if that's exactly a feature here. I'll have to get back later in the video actually, you know, talking with ZWO about this feature if that is an actual thing. So you can also, you know, select a specific area that you want to rotate to, like back to 270 for me, and it's going to go right back to the same position right here. You can also turn the beep on and off if that annoys you or not. I kind of like it, so I know it's actually functioning and doing something. But this is pretty much just how the rotator will work. It will rotate basically back and forth either direction you just have to make sure that it is in the position that you want to. So we're going to wait for some uh, skies to open up a little bit later on. we got a few clouds right now. And we'll go inside of the ASI Air app once again and go ahead and select the target and the rotation that we want to use and watch the magic unfold. All right, now that we're back inside of the comfiness and warmness inside the house, we got the skies have cleared out. So we're going to go ahead and kind of show things of exactly, you know, what it looks like inside of the Sky Atlas in regards to the rotator. So we just go over to the, uh, the Star Atlas here and you can see we can rotate this all the way through. Just find like a random point in the sky and we're going to say, you know, somewhere right here so you remember that little rotate button that we couldn't really do much of anything you just kind of had to do it manually well luckily this is exactly where you can control exactly you know the orientation of your sensor so i already have a plan that's picked out already because i have been working on a nebula inside of riga that is called avs2 project that will be coming on down the line i already have something very similar set up in the plan so we're gonna go ahead and use that one because I'm gonna be shooting this again. I only got like one night on it so far. Uh, let's go ahead and edit the plans. I don't need to do any more of just regular RGB. We're just gonna focus on more of the hydrogen alpha and oxygen three. So with this plan here, I already have set the orientation of the sensor itself. And I can show you that when we're looking inside of the sky atlas here. We go all the way over to where Auriga is, right here. So this is going to be the orientation of where my sensor is going to be. And then I'm just going to tell it to go to, and you'll see the step processes of what the actual, you know, setup and the orientation of everything when it goes to place some in the object, starting to rotate a little bit with the uh, the rotator itself and go ahead and do a little bit of some guiding. So now I'm just gonna press the uh, the plan button right here and it's gonna go ahead and start doing this thing as it's going over to plate solve now, as it heads over towards the position, you're gonna see the kind of timelines in between of what it's going to do. So right now it is verifying the target as we speak. So it's gonna be taking a series of exposures and kind of figure out where it is in the sky. It'll take a minute here for a second, still shooting. And then we should be able to start seeing the rotation of the camera itself here after it begins to plate solve. There we go. And now you see CAA rotating. So now it's gonna rotate my camera into the position that I was currently working on before, which is very, very nice. Because how many times have we had problems with, you know, a slight little shift on a target that you try to work on back, you know, a couple months ago or something like that to revisit, and the orientation of your camera is off. Well, this now solves that problem completely. And then now we're in the same field rotation, same location and all with just one simple click of a button. So what are my final thoughts for the ZWO camera angle adjuster? 
I love it. It is a great accessory to have in your arsenal now that we filled up pretty much every single USB now available to, you know, the hub and the back of the camera as well as everything to operate on the ASI Aaron itself. We've been waiting for this feature for so long because of these limiting factors of being able to frame your targets without having to manually go outside and especially like times of year like this when it's too dangerous to even go outside because it is below zero and trying to fiddle around with the angle that you want this just makes it so much easier I'll have some links down below in the description of where you can buy the ZWOCAA there's some affiliate links which it just helps me out at no cost to you and to be able to you know have a little bit of reimbursement back on my way to, to be able to kind of do these reviews and keep this channel going as it is right now it is available for pre-order which they are beginning to ship a lot more of those out now for 299 US dollars you can buy either at High Point Scientific, Gina Astro or even on the ZWO website in general so i hope this video helps you a little bit down the way i can't wait to continue to keep testing this new uh product here i'll have another subsequent video when i was talking about seeing if this will work with my rocket 135 lens because of the differences that there is with the back focus hopefully i can figure something out or if i have any more updates to something that can work later on down the line because I'm sure a lot of people will be loving to be able to use that as well for their camera lenses and the very wide angle ash photography that you can do with this kinds of setup. So thank you as always. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. It really does help the channel out a lot. Clear skies. And I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.